Professor David Kaye, Director of Cardiology at the Alfred Hospital. David, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Your colleague, I understand, built the original prototype for this artificial heart from bits and pieces bought at Bunnings. It sounds like a remarkable story. Just tell us a bit more about the model that you're all working on. I understand it's made from titanium. That's right, Ash. It's a great story. Uh, the inventor was uh, Dr. Daniel Timms, actually, who was just out of engineering school when he came up with the idea of developing this new type of artificial heart. And you're right, he went to Bunnings, he bought some plasticware, and I gather uh, perhaps even with the first prototype was on the floor of Bunnings. But that's often how engineers start with their ideas. And uh, this award that we've received today really brings together a partnership between clinicians like myself and engineers like Daniel and many others around Australia. So how does it work? As I understand it, the artificial heart doesn't beat per se, but it does still obviously work to pump blood around the body. Yeah, so it's interesting if you look back over the history of artificial hearts. In fact, the first one was developed probably over 30 years ago, and it was a very simple, somewhat clunky device that had a uh, pneumatic bladder that pumped and emptied. Uh, patients had to stay in hospital, they couldn't go home. And now we fast forward to today to the pump that Daniels uh, developed uh, with colleagues in Australia, and uh, it has a single spinning rotor it pumps blood to both the left and the right side of the circulation. And the way in which it spins is somewhat like uh, maglev technology, if you think about the bullet train and the way that uh, those trains are suspended on a magnetic field. So, David, who would be the sort of candidate who would benefit from this? Is it mainly for people waiting for transplants as a, a temporary method, or do you see this as a permanent alternative for people who need a new heart? Yeah, that's a great question. So in Australia, we have about 100 transplants performed per year. And unfortunately, there are many more patients suffering from advanced forms of heart failure and unfortunately dying from heart failure. So we see that the artificial heart platform uh, has a potential long-term solution for many of those patients who, who miss out. And within this grant, we're actually going to address a number of types of heart failure. The total artificial heart, as the name implies, will replace the whole heart. And that's going to be a solution that many patients with heart failure will need. But uh, there are other types of heart failure where new types of pumps will be developed. And that's where this partnership between engineers and clinicians across the country will de develop some new solutions. And when we look at, at the next steps, what is the next step for, for this uh, prototype? When does it actually get tested in humans? Yeah, so the next step's pretty close, actually. Uh, the first clinical trials uh, are due to start in the US, uh, perhaps in the next uh, few weeks, actually. And uh, we'll be very close behind, uh, probably in the third quarter or so here in uh, Melbourne at the Alfred and also with our colleagues at St Vincent's Hospital in Sydney. Professor David Kay, we all wish you the very best of luck with the trials. We'll be fascinated to see how it all goes. Thanks so much for telling us all about it.